This is the story of one man's obsession. That man is Carl Tanzler, and he was obsessed with a woman 32 years his junior, young Elena de Hoyos. Now, let's uh, talk a little bit about his life beforehand, the little bit that we do now, to see what we can see from his early life. Now, we know that he was born in Dresden, Germany in 1877, but unfortunately after that, we don't know much about his life. We do know that he supposedly went to some medical university somewhere, but we don't know where or what medical university he went to, supposedly. But he ends up traveling around Europe for a while. He ends up in Australia in an, in, in an internment camp during World War I. Then afterwards, they exile him. I believe he ends up in like Holland or somewhere like that. Now, the only reason he ends up in Florida, which is where this takes place, is because he had like a sister or something like that that had already previously immigrated to Florida, which is why he's in Florida. Now, fast forward to the year this whole story starts, 1930. He's working as an x-ray technician in a hospital uh, in Key West, Florida. When young 21-year-old Elena walks into this hospital and she's got tuberculosis, she... She's she's gonna die unfortunately because 1930 tuberculosis was was a death sentence. You you got you got tuberculosis. It was your death warrant was signed. It was just waiting for it to be cashed essentially. Now he, from the minute he sees her, he's obsessed with her. He's like, this is the woman I love. This is the woman I was that was made for me. And he sets um he sets out on trying to cure her of this tuberculosis. Now. Carl Tanzler did not have the ability to cure anybody of tuberculosis. He, no one could really cure tuberculosis at that point, you know what I mean? So he convinces her family to let him at least try, but he starts professing his undying love to her. He starts stealing equipment from the hospital that he's trying to use to, to cure her of this tuberculosis. He even re later said he had this plan to try to launch her into the highest stratosphere and somehow the beams would cure her or something. I don't know. But unfortunately, she dies. She dies the next year, 1931. And Tanzler is inconsolable. He insists on paying for her funeral. He insists on giving her this above ground mausoleum, all of which her family accepted because they were, you know, probably just this relatively poor Cuban immigrant family. So they probably accepted the, this guy's help. You know what I mean? So they, he pays for this funeral. Now, unbeknownst to everyone in this town, including her family, he has a key to the mausoleum. He has what I believe they said was the only key to the mausoleum. I think you guys can see where this is going. Every night for the next two years, he visits her body. He brings formaldehyde to try to preserve her. He uh, sings her favorite Spanish songs to her. He talks to her, he said... It just goes on like this for two years. And the local townspeople know that he's visiting this, this tomb every two years. Now, they obviously don't know that he's going into the mausoleum and doing whatever he's doing to her. He would later testify that she would wake up just to die again and begged her to bring him home, begged him to bring her home. Now, after two years, this visiting her corpse isn't enough, unfortunately, for him. And one day he decides to uh, kidnap her body at night and bring it back to his place where he lives with it for the next seven years. And now there are pictures of what her body looks like, which I can unfortunately only describe as some of the most grotesque pre-Dahmer, Dahmer style human taxidermy that you could ever see. I mean, he, just, he has a wig on her. He tries to repair her, some of her, her, uh, her skin that had un that had fallen off because she had been dead for two years in a mausoleum in Florida. You can imagine the state of her body. That, that that his house must have smelled. Now, apparently no one knew this happened. The local townspeople thought it was strange that he wasn't visiting her grave every night. But no, they moved on. But soon after that, rumors started to circulate because they saw him around town buying women's clothes. They saw him buying women's perfume so rumors started to float maybe he's cross-dressing maybe he took her body you know what i mean but this all starts to unravel around him when reportedly this young boy is walking past his house one day and reportedly looks through his window and sees him dancing with what he describes as a mannequin 
Now this gets to her sister who goes to Tanzer's house, who shows her this man shows her this mannequin of her sister. Now he thinks now she obviously thinks it's a mannequin, but she tells the police to investigate him. Because who would think that's actually her body, right? And to everyone's horror, the police, her family's horror, this is actually her body that he kidnapped, like I just said, and did unspeakable things to her. I mean he wired her body, he inserted tubes in certain places to assist him in certain marital things that he wanted to do. Now he gets arrested, fortunately, but unfortunately they couldn't actually convict him of anything because the statute of limitations had run out on his crime. So unfortunately, although they arrested him, they couldn't convict him of anything because of the statute of limitations. Now, from the moment he got released, the local townspeople very oddly kind of took his side because they viewed him as just this crazy eccentric romantic for whatever reason. They just thought he was this harmless guy that just kind of went a little overboard, you know what I mean? So, uh, unfortunately, um, Carl Tanzler attempts to ask for her body back. He's like, she's my wife, give her to me. And Key West is like, um, no, we're not going to give you her body back. You know what I mean? You kidnapped her from her grave and now we're going to rebury her, which is what they do. They rebury her, but they put her in an unmarked grave so she can finally rest in peace. You know what I mean? This has been an almost probably even more than a decade long from the moment she got diagnosed with tuberculosis to this man being obsessed with her to uh, her getting kidnapped after being dead for two years. So this whole charade has probably gone on for at least a decade from the moment she got diagnosed to the moment her body was recovered by the police and then reburied. Now, I hope that they told her family um, where she was buried so they at least knew... Um, where she was so they could pay her his fax. Now, Tanzler, after these charges were dropped, lives the rest of his life in Florida. And he dies, I believe, in 1952 or 1954, one of those, one of those around that time. And he reportedly had at least one, but it may have been multiple effigies of her in his house. He just rebuilt her without her body. Some people claimed it was her body, but I don't think it was because they obviously didn't tell him where he was buried where she was buried. So he didn't, he couldn't have even paid anybody to get her body for him if that's what he wanted to do because he didn't know who knew where her body was. He didn't know how to get a hold of her body. And he had made death, death mask of her that, we, that we've kind of seen in different documentaries that when people die, they make like a mold with their face. He had a bunch of these, which he had used on these effigies that they found in his house um, when he died. He died like behind his organ. I think he had like an organ in his house or something that he died behind. And um, unfortunately, that's that's the story of Carl Tanzler and Elena de Hoyos. It's an unfortunate story. Um, he tried to basically claim he was crazy. Try backtracking for a second, but they deemed him mentally competent to stand trial. Now, I think he was in, I think he had to have been crazy at some point because necrophilia is not a normal thing. I mean, most serial killers that have ever, from the Dahmers to the Bundys to the Gacy's, all of these men were necrophiles. So they had to, have, they also had to have known that necrophilia is wrong. You don't defile someone's body after they die. Even if you were in love with them and they were supposed to be your wife, once someone dies, they're dead, you know, their spirit has gone from them or whatever, and they're, it's, it's, it's just a body. That's not the person you knew or the person whatever, you know what I mean? It's just just a tragic story that kind of has captured a lot of people's imaginations for obvious reasons. But yeah, that's the story of Carl Tanzler, like I just said. Uh, let me know in the comments below what kind of other content you want to see me do, whether it's true crime or or sports or whatever whatever it is uh so yeah if you like this like the video comment on it share subscribe all that good stuff and uh until we we uh see you in the next video uh stay weird